Chairman, and thank you both for your, um, for your testimony and for your passion. Um, in light of Mr. Pullum's um, comments uh, that he just made, um, Mr. Young, I wonder if you could talk about the idea of a destination, because I think that that's some of the push and pull. Um, should NASA have a big goal that is a destination or more broadly, as the um, Space Foundation report uh, suggests, to carry out the multiple kinds of functions that you need uh, for a robust space program? And um, I would like to hear your thoughts about that. Um, I think it depends on which part of the program you are talking about. I think for the science program, um, you know, our, our basic thrust is to understand our solar system and the universe in which we live. And there are tactics that are identified in the decadal surveys as to how to go about that. Human spaceflight, in my view, is different. And um, human spaceflight can't be, be just about building rockets or, or building spacecraft. It has to be about defining how they're going to be used. And so I am, I've heard this discussion a lot, I am an advocate in human spaceflight for destination. Uh, I don't see how, you know, maybe this is ridiculous, but, you know, Apollo had a destination. And uh, so a human spaceflight, I think, is a different kind of an exploration than the robotic. Uh, the robotic is more of a program. The, the human is more focused on an activity. So I believe that a destination is critical. And as I said, after having thought about it quite a lot, um, I know it's a little bit beyond what you were asking, but I originally thought an asteroid really was a pretty good idea. It didn't have any gravity, you know, it, had, it was probably pretty easy. That's not really true. An asteroid mission is a hard mission. It's long duration. There are not many of these things. They're small. You don't walk around on them. You kind of swim up to them. Um, and uh, so that's caused me to rethink this destination, and that's why I really touched on my comments. I think that for human spaceflight exploration, there really f uh, there's a small set of, of, of excuse me, destination in our lifetime. It's the moon, it's Phobos, it's Deimos, and Mars. They're significantly different. Um, an asteroid, a uh, Lagrange point can all be steps in pursuing something such as that, but they're not destinations that are either, in my view, practical or are they destinations which inspire. Let me, let me just ask both of you, um, in, you know, in order to get someplace and to do these big programs, one of my big frustrations with, um, with NASA is that it's tough to do science on a year-to-year what's my budget going to be? And I think many of us share that, uh, that fr frustration. I think certainly within the agency and the industry that is true. Um, and I have long been curious about what it would mean for the big programs to construct a budget or a process that would allow for that kind of multi-year, you know, don't have to ask every single year what's my budget going to be so that I can manipulate the program and the work to fit that budget, but to work toward the science. Um, it, can, you, can you share with me, especially from an industry standpoint, Mr. Young, what that would mean for the ver both for the agencies and for the contractors to have a little bit more certainty when it comes to the science, and whether you think that would also contribute to more realism in the budgets that are presented for these uh, big flagship programs? Well, I think the answer is yes. Uh, let me uh, comment a little bit. We actually had that, and whether or not we've gotten off with Mars. Mars, Mars was really a program, uh, you know, not a project. And um, we recognized that Mars was one of the, you know, really challenging scientific uh, pursuits of kind of our, of our era. And we learned that every step along the way, you know, we built on what we learned from one mission to what we did with, uh, with another mission. And I think that, you know, through the DECA surveys and other, we had a program that was laid out pretty much into the future. And uh, uh, maybe not funded in the future, but I think the stability was pretty good. I must admit that some of the actions in the last year 
you know, have, um, um, have at least interrupted that, uh, that process. Whether we're back on it or not, I don't really know, but, you know, leading up ultimately to a sample return. So I think decadal surveys, you know, which are over 10-year time frames, they provide the basis of that. I had the privilege of being both on the astronomy the physics decadal survey and the planetary um, decadal survey. So I was able to observe firsthand incredible debates that go on, you know, in that process. And, and the results really are roadmaps, and they're well thought out, well supported uh, uh, roadmaps. So I'm with you. I think a science program, um, I, I, I can't see any advantage to juggling it every year, so to speak. So to speak. It's, uh, it is clearly uh, benefits from, from stability. And back to industry, I mean, the key to success in industry is a stable strategy and a stable implementation uh, plan. That responds to new information, but doesn't respond to, gee, I'd like to rethink it again. Thank you. And my time has uh, run out, but eventually I'd look forward to hearing from Mr. Pullum on this, too.